changes in the arts literature painting and architecture interaction with the europeans and the social reform movements gave rise to new trends in indian literature art and architecture major developments in literature the changes brought about in modern indian literature in the 19th and early 20th centuries were although the study of indian languages was subordinate to the study of the english their growth was stimulated under the impact of the modern ideas new literary forms like novel and the drama became popular there was much change in the content of the literature more emphasis was given on the current problems even historical dramas like the neel darpan began to be written with an eye on the present this drama dealt with the atrocities of the english on the indigo planters literature became more realistic social and secular mythology and devotional songs were replaced by secular themes the literature in the 19th century contributed in the rising of the national consciousness the introduction of the printing press contributed greatly to the production of literature on a large scale main features of modern indian literature were the indian writers adopted european literary forms such as sonnet ode blank verse in poetry and narrative prose in novels along with their own literary traditions the content of literature was native or local indian literature was nationalist in character it laid emphasis on national liberation writers glorified the past they also criticized the old traditions and conventions indian writers produced literature in vernacular languages forms of indian literature all forms of indian literature like fiction short story poetry drama and theater witnessed a great boom in the 19th and early 20th centuries fiction the european influence on indian novelist is quite clear b c chatterjee is the most famous indian novelist in the bengali language anand mat is his well known work it contains national songs such as vande matram munshi premchand wrote novels in hindi and urdu in his immortal works like godan and rangbhumi he narrates the real tale of misery sorrow and sufferings of the peasants the famous bengali novelists such as vibhuti bhushan pathir panchali tara shankar gana devta and manik padmanadir maji followed premchand the most famous novelists include renu maila achal in hindi gopinath praja in oriya panna lal patel makela jeet in gujarati shivram karanath choma dudi in kannada bhai chandra namadi kosla in marathi etc sharat chandra chatterjee was also a noble bengali novelist who wrote about the problems of middle class society and family life jainendra kumar was a psychological novel writer in hindi yashpal's jhootha sach and heather's a kadariya are also very famous short story rabindranath tagore premchand yashpal jainendra kumar sadat hasan manto rajendra singh bedi and krishnan chandra are the well known story writers of india poetry Indian poetry witnessed the rise of romanticism after its contact with the European literature but there was one great difference between the two the Indian romantic poetry laid stress on nationalism national movement anti-feudalism and anti-imperialism the notable Indian poets are Rabindranath Tagore Bengali Iqbal Urdu Qazi Nazrul Islam Bengali Keshav Sood Marathi Subramania Bharti Tamil etc After 1936 the Indian poetry took to realism both in thought and language it laid great stress on day-to-day -day life and miseries of the masses Agyaya and Mukti Bodh Hindi Faiz and Majaz Urdu Jeevananda Das Bengali B S Mardekar Marathi etc represent the new poetry the famous poets 
who emerged after independence include Raghubir Sahai and Kedarnath Singh, Hindi, Shakti Chattopadhyay, Bengali, etc. Drama and Theatre The Indian dramatists and actors have tried to combine the Western and the Eastern styles in drama acting. The Indian People's Theatre Association rendered useful service in creating interest in drama and theatre. Badal Sarkar, Bengali, Vijaya Tindulkar, Marathi, and Girish Karnad, Kannada, are the famous dramatists. Shambhu Mitra, Sri Ram Lagu, Habib Tanvir, Satyadev Dube, etc., have tried their best to promote theatre. Mulk Raj Anand, Raja Rao, and R.K. Narayan wrote in English. In fact, Rabindranath Tagore is the very soul of this period. He was a versatile genius who shines like a star on the literary horizon of India. He won a great name and fame for his country when he won the Nobel Prize, the highest international award for literature, for his immortal work Geetanjali. His writings contain a combination of ancient Indian traditions and the new European consciousness. He laid stress on national awakening and international humanism. He wrote mostly in his mother tongue, that is, Bengali. He gave a new type of lyric to Indian poetry. Tagore was not only a poet, but also a great story writer and a novelist. Galpagucha is a collection of short stories. His novels, such as Gora and Ghare Bayre, speak volumes of his genius. Tagore was an original creator of music. His paintings threw lights on the high quality of his art. Major developments in the field of art and painting. Main influences on modern Indian art. Factors influenced the development of art in India were Indian art was patronized by kings and princes. Indian art was greatly influenced by the European colonialism. It became bleak and barren after the loss of patronage of the local rulers. A few princely courts in Rajasthan and Punjab still patronized the artists who followed the Mughal and Rajasthan traditions. The spread of English education gave rise to urban culture. Cities like Calcutta, Bombay and Madras became the centres of art. Art schools were set up in Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. They followed the methods and syllabi of the British Royal Academy. As a result, the Indian artists began to use oil colours on canvas, watercolour on paper, etc. The Indian artists began to use art materials and techniques of European art. The national movement in India during the 19th century against the foreign rule inspired nationalism among the Indian artists. These artists tried to discover the rich cultural heritage of India. The researches of European scholars also inspired the artists. The artists during this period were nationalist and patriotic. The discoveries of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro and of Ajanta and Elora caves stimulated the Indian artists. The artists of the 20th century were inspired by the spirit of nationalism and they tried to create national art instead of copying and following the foreign art. History of Modern Art the modern Indian art may be studied under three chronological phases, the colonial western phase, the nationalist phase and the modern phase. The western phase The western phase is associated with the practice of oil painting and the adoption of the academic, realistic style. New schools of art were set up in the metropolitan cities of Madras, 1850, Calcutta, 1854, Bombay, 1856, and Lahore, 1878. For fine arts, Western academic art set the norm, while in the decorative arts, India's traditional crafts were seen to excel. Raja Ravi Varma, 1848-1906, was a sign of the royal family of Travancore and a self-taught oil painter, is the most exemplary product of the westernizing phase, the nationalist phase. The nationalist phase began in 1905 
and the anti-colonial Swadeshi agitation in Bengal. Abhinendranath Tagore, 1871-1951, first evolved the Indian style painting. He stylized watercolor, wash paintings. His paintings explored themes from Mughal history. Jay Deva's Gita Govinda, Kalidasa's Ritu Samhara, and Meghudatta. His students included Nandilal Bose, etc., and some Japanese artists who formed the core of the new school of Indian painting. By the 1920s, the Bengal school of painting had taken an all India character. The modern phase. After the nationalist phase, the story of modern Indian art came to centre at Rabindranath Tagore's new art teaching centre, the Kala Bhavan, set up in 1920 at Shanti Niketan under the charge of Nandalal Bose, 1882-1966. This art was rooted in a variety of oriental pictorial traditions, ranging from ajanta and bag murals to Chinese brush painting and Japanese woodcuts to the indigenous folk art of the Path Chitra. Binod Bihari Mukherjee, 1904-80, the painter, and Ram Kinkar Bajaj, 1906-80. A sculptor were the other two modern masters of Shanti Niketan. Rabindranath Tagore, the Nobel laureate, himself was a great artist. His paintings were individualistic, produced in watercolours, crayons and mixed media. Amrita Shergil, 1913-1941, the sole woman artist of the entire early history of art, deserves a special mention. She was a genius in oil painting and academic realism. She evolved a distinct ethnic facial type in her figures and made the ordinary people. The subjects of her art, Jamini Roy, 1887-1974, to 1974, was another prominent Bengali painter who produced the most successful modern folk style for times. The names of E. B. Havel, A. K. Kumar Swami, George Keat, Fergusson, Percy Brown and Sir John Marshall also deserve mention. After 1947, there emerged the Progressive Artists Group, PAG, which included Makbul Fida Hossein, H. A. Gade, Sayyid Haider Raza, Sadanand G. Bakre, Francis Newton Souza, Satish Gujral, etc. The main centre of art was Bombay. M. F. Hussain was a great signboard painter. Later, his paintings suggested the complex fabric of Indian life from Mahabharat, Mother Teresa, etc. Satish Gujral painted the miseries of the refugees through dark, angry colours and brushwork. He was greatly influenced by Mexican mural painters like Diego Rivera and David Siqueiros. The Baroda School of Art was represented by Shanti Dave, G. R. Santosh, Jyoti Bhatt, Gulam Sheikh, etc. The Madras School of Art flourished under the guidance of D. R. Chaudhary and K. C. S. Panikar during the post-independence period. Sculpture in the post-independence era, giant images in bronze were produced by Ram Kinkar Bej and Meera Mukherjee. Somnath War produced small bronze works. In Madras, P. V. Janakiram and S. Dhanapal created iconic images in bronze and copper. Pilu Pochkanawala and Adi Divyarwala from Bombay and Pradosh Dasgupta, Amarnath Sehgal and Sakho Chaudhary from Delhi were other prominent sculptors. Nagji Patel and Raghav Kaneria created sensuous images on stone, while B.S. Kat replicated the ancient sculpture. Him Macha and K.G. Subramaniam rediscovered the tactile surfaces of clay and terracotta. Abstract Art The early pioneers in abstract art include V.S. Gatonde, Sayyid Haider Raza, Ram Kumar Birende, K. N. Panikar, J. Swaminathan, etc. Modern trends in Indian art have been given recognition and patronage by critics, individuals, government, etc. The National Gallery of Modern Art contains a large number of collections 
of modern art. The Lalit Kala Academy has published monographs on contemporary art and artists. Changes in performing arts, music, dance and theatre are the main performing arts. India had a rich heritage in these fields before the coming of the English in India. Our classical music, both the Hindustani and Carnatic styles, presents a rich heritage. We are simply thrilled by the rendering of the classical music, vocal as well as instrumental. Music and dance have also been influenced by the Renaissance in India. The Sangeet Samay of Calcutta and Nanu Tejak Mandir of Bombay created awakening in the field of music. Pandit P. N. Bhat Khande inaugurated new education in music and infused a new spirit for music among people. Vishnu Digambar also tried to revive music and his disciples were spread all over northern India and Bombay. Rabindranath Tagore revived Indian music in Bengal. Many other institutions were set up in Delhi, Lucknow, Gwalior, Calcutta, Madras, Pune, etc. for the promotion of music. By his brilliant exposition and masterly demonstration of Indian music, Dilip Kumar Roy won admiration in Western countries. While classicists glorify the antiquity and sanctity of ancient Indian music, it is film music that has captured the minds and hearts of the audiences. Initially, the film industry attracted many classical musicians, such as Hirabai Barudekar, Zohra Bai, M. S. Subbulakshmi, Bega Makhtar, as well as maestros like Allah Rakha Khan, Tabla, Ravi Shankar, Sitar, and Abdul Halim Zafar Khan, Sitar. Indie pop is the latest addition to popular music. It was created by Indian musicians with a Western orientation. Today, it has emerged as a great success. A number of songs and dance by indie pop singer Dalir Mehendi adds luster to a picture. Dance Manipuri, Kathakali, Kathak, Bharatnatyam, Kuchipuri, Odissi, etc are the various classical dance forms. Institutions like Kala Shetra, Kerala Kala Mandalam, Siddhendra Kala Shetra, Bharatiya Kala Kendra, Kathak Kendra, and Jawaharlal Nehru Manipur Dance Academy play a key role in producing dance dramas. Folk dance forms like Chow were also brought into the mainstream and were used for choreography. Uday Shankar the famous choreographer in India presented two dance dramas in the late 1920s in England. During 1932 to 1960s, he performed regularly in America. He established the Uday Shankar India Culture Center in 1938 at Almora, now in Uttarakhand, where he trained a new generation of dancers in the Oriental style. By the 1920s, Rabindranath Tagore too had been exposed to the dance traditions of Southeast Asia. Dance was a part of the curriculum at a school in Shantiniketan. The Rabindrik or Tagore school of dance is quite famous. Uday Shankar's contemporary Shanti Bardhan created a new dance vocabulary for his ballet Ramayana. In the 1980s, leading classical dancers like Mrilalini Sarabhai and her daughter Malika Sarabhai, Yamini Krishnamurthy, Sonal Mansingh, Chandralekha, Kumudni Lakhya, etc. became popular. In contemporary dance, the theme shifted from the mythological to the modern. Manjushri Chaki Sarkar and her daughter Rajanbati have evolved the Nar Nitya dance language. Ustad Debu and Uttara Kurlawala have evolved their individual styles. Development of Architecture The coming of the Europeans marks the introduction of European architecture in India. In the 16th century, the Arabian sea forts at Chol in Maharashtra, 1516, and Diu in Gujarat, 1536, are reminders of the essentially military character of the Portuguese colonial enterprise. The churches of Old Goa give the best idea of the Baroque ecclesiastical style in India.
the Sea Cathedral, 1561 to 1651, is the largest church in South Asia. The nearby Basilica of Bom Jesus, 1605, church is equally grand. The church is laid out on a cruciform plan with prominent transepts. Dainborg at Trangambari on the Bay of Bengal coast of Tamil Nadu, 1620, is an example of Danish military architecture. British settlements were also martial in character, as may be judged from the star-shaped polygonal layouts of Fort William in Calcutta, 1757, and Fort St. George in Madras, 1783. English church architecture in neoclassical, as in the Cathedral Church of St. Thomas in Mumbai, 1672, to 1718, Neo-Gothic architecture became fashionable in the 19th century, as can be seen in St. Paul's Cathedral in Calcutta, 1839 to 80, and All Saints Cathedral in Allahabad, UP. The same mix of styles characterizes British civic monuments. One of the largest neoclassical projects of the era is Raj Bhavan in Calcutta. 1799 to 1802, seat of the British governors and viceroys until 1911. Other neoclassical projects include Raji Roji Hall in Chennai, 1802, Town Hall in Mumbai, 1833, and Senate Hall of Calcutta University, 1864. Similar features characterize many of the princely residences of the era such as the Aina Mehel at Murshidabad in West Bengal, 1829-37, and the Falaknama Palace outside Hyderabad, 1872. The new Gothic style also proved serviceable for British civic monuments. For example, the Convocation Hall and Rajabai Tower of Bombay University, 1869-74, to High Court, 1869, Victoria Terminus, 1888, and the Railway Offices, 1894. Neo-Gothic buildings are also found in Queen's College in Varanasi, 1847, and High Court in Calcutta, 1864-72. An important innovation of the era was the Indo-Saracenic mode with its imaginative blend of Neo-Gothic elements with cusped arches, chhatris, and bulbous domes drawn from late Mughal architecture. Monuments of Indo-Saracenic style include those of Art Museum in Thiruvananthpuram in Kerala, 1872, Senate House of Madras University in Chennai, 1874-79, Lakshmi Vilas Palace in Vadodara, 1881, Central Museum in Jaipur, 1875-85, Senate House of Allahabad University, 1883, and the KG Medical College in Lucknow, 1912. Islamic revivalism characterizes the Prince of Wales Museum, 1908-15, and the General Post Office, 1909-14, in Mumbai. High Court, 1916, and Osmania General Hospital, 1919, in Hyderabad. Hindu revivalism may be seen in the Lakshmi Narayan Mandir in New Delhi, 1938. The Rashtrapati Bhavan, earlier the Viceroy's house, sited at the Rajpath of Delhi, 1912-29. And the nearby circular Sansad Bhavan is a monumental version of neoclassicism created by Edwin Lutens. Neoclassicism in Calcutta at this time is best represented by the Victoria Memorial, 1921, designed by William Emerson. The Umed Bhavan in Jodhpur, in Rajasthan, 1929-44, is designed in an Art Deco manner by Henry Vaughan Lanchester. After independence, projects were taken up by architects of international repute. Lee Corbusier, the Swiss-born architect, contributed to the master plan of Chandigarh. With his individual brand of modernism, the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, was undertaken by the American architect Louis Kahn. Charles Correa, 
created Gandhi Memorial Center in Ahmedabad, 1958-63, and the Jawahar Kala Kendra Complex in Jaipur, 1986-91, Mumbai and Chennai, Mumbai, formerly Bombay, Bombay, the modern Mumbai, and Madras, Chennai, were declared as the presidency towns under the British rule. Soon, these two places became a hub of cultural activities, along with the political and commercial activities. Both made good progress in the field of performing arts, like music in Mumbai. We still find a large number of architectural structures in Bombay, which remind us of the old days of the colonial rulers. They all are made in the Indo-European style because they depict a combination of many features of European architecture and Indian architecture. The Victoria Terminus The Victoria Terminus, now known as Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, was built in 1888. It was named after Queen Victoria, the then ruler of Great Britain. It was designed by the famous British architect F. W. Steris. It took almost 10 years, 1878 to 1888, to build and complete the majestic terminus. This terminus is the westernmost endpoint to the Central Railway of India. Prince of Wales Museum Prince of Wales Museum, now called Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahale, is located in the heart of South Bombay, near the Gateway of India. George Wiltet, one of the great architects, and engineers of his time, was commissioned to design the building in 1909. It was completed in 1915. The architecture of the museum is a combination of several architectural elements. The main building is three stories, high capped by a dome which very much resembles the dome of the Taj Mahal at Agra. The museum houses rare and ancient exhibits of Indian history as well as objects from foreign lands. The Gateway of India Near the Prince of Wales Museum stands the famous Gateway of India, facing the glittering waters of the ocean. It was completed by George Wiltet and his friend John Begg. The Gateway of India was built to commemorate the visit of George V and Queen Mary for the Darbar at Delhi in 1911. Other Buildings of Mumbai, Bombay over and above the buildings mentioned are the buildings which still stand today as major landmarks in Mumbai are the General Post Office, Municipal Corporation, Rajabhai Tower, Bombay University, Elphinstone College, the Crawford Market, the Old Secretariat, Public Works Department, etc. All these buildings were constructed in the later half of the 19th century and the early 20th century. Chennai, formerly Madras. Madras or modern Chennai was constructed on the land acquired by the English in 1639 from the local Raja. Soon, it developed into a flourishing town and in 1658, it was raised to the rank of a presidency. It developed into a vast city and became a hub of not only political activities but also developed into a great centre of economic and cultural pursuits. Though industrialized, the city continues to be traditional and conventional in many ways. A great many grand buildings were constructed here in the later 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. The special tourist attractions of Madras, Chennai are Fort St. George. Fort St. George is the first British fortress in India, built in 1639 at the coastal city of Madras. It was named after St. George, the patron saint of India. It houses the Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly and the Secretariat. The fort has the country's latest flagstaff at a height of 150 feet. Tipu Sultan's carvings still decorate the ramparts of Fort's museum. Georgetown It is situated near the port of Chennai. It was a place where dockyard workers and other labourers used to live. It is now a commercial centre with narrower roads and tightly packed buildings. The War Memorial The War Memorial 
which is situated to the south of the Fort St. George, is a graceful building. It was built in 1939 in memory of the warriors who sacrificed their lives during the First World War. The High Court The High Court of Chennai, built in 1892, is believed to be the second largest judicial complex in the world, after London's judicial complex. Its decorative domes and corridors are best examples of Indo-European architecture. St. Thomas Cathedral Basilica It is at the southern end of Marina Beach and was made in honour of St. Thomas, an apostle of Christ. The beautiful stained glass window at the Basilica portrays the story of St. Thomas. Its central hall has 14 wooden plaques depicting scenes from the last days of Christ. In the cathedral is a three feet high statue of Virgin Mary, which is believed to have been brought from Portugal. Other buildings of the colonial period in Chennai Other buildings of the colonial period in Chennai are the Presidency College, built in 1840, the Chennai Central Station, 1873, the Raipon Building, 1913, the Southern Railway Headquarters, 1922, etc. These are some of the best examples of Indo-European style of architecture.